I often hear experienced players trying to help out new players, and the inevitable topic of dinking comes up. After watching players at a higher level, many new players elect to embrace the soft game early and often. That's great, until it's not. The nationwide love affair with dinking can often come at a price, and that price is a poor understanding of when and how to attack in the kitchen. When I first started, I made a conscious decision to launch attacks from a variety of locations in a variety of different ways. I knew that it could be years before I experienced success with this, but what I was gonna get was feedback. Every unsuccessful attack was a lesson learned, often with a bruise to show it by. Eventually, slowly but surely, I learned which attacks were going to work and why. Got it. When deciding how to launch an initial attack, it's often difficult for players to know exactly what kind of shot they need to play in order to maximize their chance of success. Today I'm gonna to run you through some basic scenarios and the most appropriate attacks to use. Let's start off with the most common attackable ball in the kitchen. Visions of getting one of these balls on match point in a gold medal match are what dreams are made of. Your opponent really screwed the pooch on this one and it should be good night Irene 100% of the time. To receive this ball more often, stay up close to the kitchen as soon as you've hit a high quality dink and assume a nice low position. Your standard volley technique is what's called for here, with an increased amount of wrist involvement as the contact point becomes higher. If there is a good size gap in the middle, aim your attack there. If not, feel free to take the gloves off and look for that right shoulder. Give them the old chicken wing. Between the hip and chest height will work well. It'll give you a great chance to follow up your attack with another, should they defend the first. Avoid the temptation to aim wide of either opponent, unless they've given you a lot of real estate to work with. On this occasion, your opponent has got it half right. Whether it be the pace, accuracy, spin of your shot, or their grip pressure, they have played a shot that is staying close to the net, but with too much power. You are left with what can be a tricky decision. Do you move back quickly to let it bounce in order to play a dink? Stand your ground and play a volley dink? Or stand your ground and attack? The right choice depends on a number of factors. One of them being, is your team serving? Players are typically more willing to take chances on serve, knowing that they can't lose a point. Do you have a significant hand speed advantage over the player opposite from you? If so, it's time to attack. Do your opponents have a significant advantage in the soft game? If so, you don't have to play that game. It's time to attack. There are obviously more subtle factors at play here, but let's assume you've chosen to attack. Now what? This ball is likely going to be below the height of the net, which means your standard volley technique isn't going to work so well here. Rolling volley to the rescue. You are undoubtedly down in a balanced low position so as to read the dink well. Stay down and drop the paddle head below the perceived contact point. Brush up on the ball with a combination of your shoulder, elbow and wrist working together to give the ball lift, spin and enough power. To many opponents this will come as a surprise so there's no need to overhit this ball. As with your response to the floater, look for any large available gaps in the middle of the court to aim and if they aren't available then the right shoulder of the person in front of you is a great place to aim. As this shot is coming from below the net height, you'll need as much court to work with as possible, which means avoid going for the sidelines. Again, in this case, your opponents have got their shot half right. Hitting their dink short enough inside the kitchen so as to avoid a volley attack, but have hit it a foot or more above the net. Should we let them off the hook? That decision is based on the same factors mentioned in the previous scenario, but this certainly falls into the category of an attackable dink. Remember, if your opponent sees that they're consistently able to hit their dinks too high, then they'll never really feel any pressure from the net. It's time to attack. If you haven't seen the lesson Basics of Kitchen Attack, Footwork Off the Bounce, please take a moment to look at that now. Welcome back. So, you've got yourself into great position to contact the ball at apex, giving you the best possible chance to play the ball aggressively. Now what? Employ the same basic technique as the rolling volley. Paddle head lower than the contact height and brush up and through the ball. 
given that the ball you're attacking is going to have less energy after it bounces, you're going to have to give it a little more oomph. How much and where you get that power from is determined by your contact height. If your contact height starts dropping below the height of the net, then you won't be able to hit with too much power, meaning you'll need to do more work with your wrist roll than hip and shoulder rotation. Your wrist can create plenty of topspin and not overpower the shot, whilst also doing a good job of disguising your attack. If you're lucky and you get to contact this ball above net height, you might be able to put the ball away, which means you'll need to employ more of the power mechanisms. Good trunk rotation and longer swing can be used here, knowing that you can effectively hit down on the ball without fear of it going long. Here's a quick cheat sheet to help you make the right choice on attacking around the kitchen. If their shot is too deep and too high, then a normal volley attack. If their shot is deep but low, then a rolling volley attack. If their shot is high but short, attack off the bounce. And if their shot is low and short, then just dink it back. That's usable. That was, it's not gonna get any better. It was, it was organic. I just kept talking. Best chance of success. <laughs> welcome back. Oh, welcome back. Welcome back. Oh, come on. <laughs>